Good morning, everyone. Today we have something super special in the garage. This is a Beck Spider. It's a reproduction of Porsche's 550 Spider from the early 50s. Like, I think they built them between 53 and 56. So Porsche only built like 90 of those things and they're insanely expensive. So this is a wonderful little tribute car. It's really well made. It has a tubular steel frame and the bodywork is all fiberglass on it. It's really kind of a fun car, really kind of that really super fun weekend car that's, that's just so wonderful to have in your garage and it certainly looks amazing. So I'm going to be doing a big compare between this car and Ava here, the 356, but uh, the car's not quite running perfectly. It's got a few issues. I need to get into the throttle linkage. It's leaking some oil on the valve covers and probably need to tune up the carburetors and stuff. And I want to drive the car a little bit and just sort of see how it handles and things too. So that's what I'm going to do today in prep of that video. I thought it'd be really fun to have you guys along so that you can see kind of the work. I really don't know what I'm getting into, so it should be quite an adventure getting this thing um, working. Now, Mike was able to bring the car over, but it, it's got like one eighth throttle. So you just, it took him forever and it was kind of a mess. So I told him I would go through the car and I'm really looking forward to it. It's gonna be super fun. So I have to get the car up on the lift, which means I need to get it out from underneath the car that's already up there, which is Shamu. So let me go ahead and get this thing started. Hopefully it'll start and run and get it out of the way, get the lift down, blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, holy cow, we got a bit of work to do. That was just to move it from here to over here. Oh my God, what a pain. So I got no throttle, it's not running well. We're gonna get into that today. So I'll go ahead and open up this clamshell. It's normally latched, but I don't have it latched. And it just basically comes up like this. There's a rod here that just goes on top of this shock tower there. So there we go. Just like that. All right. So the engine on this guy is just a standard Beck supply engine for this thing. It's a Beetle engine, I think, Volkswagen engine. It's 1900 cc with dual carburetors. Now these are Delordos, which I understand is an Italian copy of a Solex. So it's got an alternator on it, which is kind of nice. There's the oil fill right there, that chrome cover. So there's a metal plate down there where the fuel pump would normally be, and this has an electric fuel pump. And in my opinion, the fuel line there going through there is a little dodgy, a little strange. And it comes around here and comes back to this side. Now our throttle linkage that we're going to be working on is right there. And it pops through to the other side and it's right here as well and travels back. That's that cable. So something is really screwy with that thing because I'll show you what it looks like under the dash. So see the throttle linkage here? Look how the end of it is right up against that tube. So that's not right. We're gonna have to fix that. I'm not sure exactly what's causing that, but pull this plate. We're gonna find out why that tube has moved forward. I'm gonna start by taking this plate off here. There's a couple of screws on each side and there's one on the other sides. All right, let's see what we've got here. Get this cover off. Okay, so there's our tube. There must be a clamp up here maybe. It's gotta be some type of clamp. There's a clamp. Not 
whole thing seems kind of screwy. So let's figure this out and get this moved. Let's see, this needs to go. There we go. It's eight. It's just a big washer on top of that, sort of. Okay, flat washer. All right, there. See? That's better. That's what's going on. Okay, so I'm guessing this guy should be right about there ish, which would put this Bowden back a bit. Let's push this back as far as it'll go, actually. Yeah. All right, I'll try to reattach this. I'm not really super psyched about this clamp, though, huh? I wonder if we can do better than that. So, this is our original piece here, and it's really flimsy and not really happening. And obviously, it let the throttle uh, sheath go and the Bowden tube moved all the way forward and that was a problem. So I was thinking, well, I can probably find some piece of metal that's a bit stronger, but this is, this is lame. So I actually have insulated um, clamps. They have a little rubber guy that goes around them. That'll be perfect and it'll hold onto it really well. But obviously we're a little off on the diameter. So what I'm gonna do is re-bend this to where it's the right size and then I'll re-drill this hole and that should work great. And I can just cut this guy down here. We can clamp this thing on and should be super solid. So this is how the bracket turned out. Looks pretty good to me. I think it's gonna work out pretty well. I've got my rubber guy here. I'm just gonna install that on the inside of it. All right. Okay, hopefully this will work. All right here with our new clamp. Okay, so we've got this pushed back as far as it'll go. I'll tighten this down a little bit. Now, I want to adjust this again yeah, look at that pull. Yeah, okay. So this is our throttle linkage here, and you can see it's all the way past the end. Uh, it's a little, it needs to be adjusted. So what I want to do is adjust it. That will allow me to adjust the Bowden tube on the other side and get it exactly where it needs to be. I'm going to put this right in the middle. So let me go get a wrench, and we'll loosen that up. All right, so we'll loosen this guy up. Wasn't that tight, that's for sure. And we're going to push it back a little bit. Here, so that's I got a little bit more to work with. All right, there we go. All right, let's see if we can get a little more adjustment on this. Loosen this guy all the way back up. All right, we'll push this tube back as far as it'll go. So here's our throttle linkage here, and this is idle. So what we need is this little arm to go all the way up to the stop here. So when I press the gas pedal, there it goes, all the way. See that? Now we have full throttle. That's pretty sweet. Okay, super cool. I want to show you kind of a cool tool. This thing is used to get lubricant into these cables because this thing's really dry. So it's got a wide end on it and then a narrow end and you stick your little uh, tube in here when you've got your spray lubricant and it will force it down into the actual Bowden tube here. So, all right, so all we have to do, this one has a lip here, so I'm not sure exactly how well this is gonna work, but we'll give it a try. But all we have to do is really just place this guy on and move it into place kind of wiggle it back and forth because of that lip. All right. So we've got it on a little bit. That looks good. And then you just tighten it down so that it makes a good seal on the actual cable. This just fits right in here. There it goes. You'll feel it go in. Yeah, it's coming up a little bit because of that. That's okay though. We can still get a little bit of lubricant in there, I think. Well, I think I had the throttle linkages pretty sorted. They seem to work pretty well. I went through and greased all the linkages and all the cables and stuff, and it seems to be working better. So next, I'd really like to get to the carburetors and get the thing running, but 
If I do that and get the car good and hot, the valve covers are leaking down onto the exhaust manifold, so it would completely fill the whole garage with white smoke. So I think next what I really want to do is get in, get those valve covers off, and reseal them so that they don't leak, leak oil all over the place and get those exhaust manifolds cleaned. So to do that, I have to get the car up. So that's the next step. Well, this is the underside. I've cleaned it quite a bit, but see that red sealant that's at the base of these pushrod tubes? That tells me that that's where the leak is. Somebody's tried to seal that. I don't see a huge amount. It's very hard to see actually the actual valve cover under there. It's just kind of cramped underneath here. But they don't probably aren't leaking. So I think at this point, let me show you the other side. Over here, same sort of deal over here. I got some of that gunk cleaned out of there. Not all of it though. It's pretty bad. So I think at this point, uh, I think what I'm gonna do is drop the car, start it and try to get it running. Since I've got the heater boxes and things pretty well cleared off, it shouldn't really smoke too bad down here. Plus with it clean, I can now tell where the oil is actually coming from once it heats up. But I tried to get this thing started and it wouldn't really run. So I think we have bigger fish to fry than just a little bit of oil under here. So let's get the car back down and try to start it and see what happens. Well, that to me sounds like crap, to be honest. Well, I read through the manual on the carburetors a little bit, and it's really not any that much different than the ones on the little 356, actually. So, same sorts of adjustments. So, the funny thing about these carburetors is that they don't have a choke. So, since they don't have a choke, they rely on the accelerator pump to get the car going. And according to the manual, these things should idle after 30 seconds on their own. So... Maybe I'm just being a little fussy with it. I'm kind of used to the 356 running a little differently. So let me give this another try and we'll see just if um, we can get the car to idle. So that's the next step. A few moments later. Oh, that still doesn't sound quite right to me. I'm not sure I'm really feeling ad adventurous enough to take it out at this point. I really don't want Heidi to have to tow me back home. So I think I'm just going to look into it a little bit more and we'll get back to this tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. There's more to come. We're gonna get this car running. We're gonna get it running well. And then I wanna detail it, make it all pretty and everything. So we got lots of stuff to do. And then there's gonna be the episode of the compare too. So lots coming up on this. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did give it a thumbs up, if you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thanks so much for watching. Till next time, safe travels. Bye.